Oh, oh my. <laughs> So I know this YouTube channel is called Reptiliatus, but did you know that I keep over 13 types of amphibian in this reptile room and the rest of my home? In today's video, we're going to be doing a special feeding video. We're going to be going through my house and feeding all of my pet frogs. Because what you don't know is that I love frogs and amphibians at large. Whenever I get to travel the world and see these animals, they're some of my favorite critters and creatures that I come across. And I'm enthusiastic about creating an opportunity to show you all the ones that I keep as pets. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one lengthy video a week as well as several YouTube shorts. All right, guys, let's get into it because today is gonna be fun. Also, like my hat, check it out. It's a frog, in case you weren't sure. Many of my frog species are diurnal, which means that they are active during the day. For the most part, frogs are nocturnal animals. So it's really quite special and unique to own species that are active and able to be observed by the keeper during the daytime. We're gonna start by feeding all my poison dart frogs and introducing some of them to you that you haven't seen yet. Let's get started with the dart frogs. Okay, everybody, so we're gonna start here with a group of Dendrobates tinctorius azurus, which are the blue dying frogs. Currently, there is still a group of four in here. There are three males and one female. You may recall from the expo video up above here that I picked up a beautiful female from Mark Pepper of Understory Enterprises. Here's some of the males hanging out. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead now and feed them some fruit flies and see what they make of that meal. So poison dart frogs are microphagous feeders, which means that they eat tiny prey relative to their size. You'd think, oh, maybe they'll eat like some small crickets, but no, um, they normally feed on very small organisms. So these are flightless fruit flies, which means that they cannot fly. They're genetically modified, only be able to walk. So they're walks, not flies, get it? Ha ha ha. All jokes aside, I forgot to tap the calcium in first, which kind of helps stop them from climbing right away. So we're gonna do that now. Some Rapashi Calcium Plus. I dust every feeding with this, and sometimes there are a few other supplements I alternate with this one, but here we go. Now they won't be able to climb out. There we go, flight this fruit flies. And it's funny, you don't realize how smart these frogs are. They'll hear that tapping noise and they'll be all excited and get ready and run up to the front of the tank. So let's go ahead now and offer these dusted fruit flies, Drosophila hydei, to my Dendrobates cinctorius. So here we go, you can hear that tapping and they're all over here in the back. Watch, they're gonna hear that noise and come running up to the front. The female's already like, oh, I hear something. So you'll see, here we go. Start putting the flies in. And all the frogs are gonna run to the front of the tank. Here's one of the males. Here comes a female. And there's another male. The third one is somewhere in here. There, as you can see, absolutely gorgeous frogs. There he is, there's the whole group. Flies don't know what is going on. They're just busy trying to wipe the calcium off of their bodies, if you can see that, wiping their hands, and frogs are just gonna take them out, <laughs> unfortunately. Where are you going, buddy? Okay, the little click sounds from their tongues, which is kind of funny. So you'll notice that they do this toe tapping as they hunt. See the toes flicking around? And a lot of people believe the reason behind that is to sort of disperse the prey uh, by tapping. It gets them to kind of flee in all sorts of directions and come out from hiding. So if you can imagine all the tiny little organisms, springtails, mites, ants, termites that would be hiding under foliage, by tapping it distracts them or frightens them out into the open and gives them a chance to eat them. So it's pretty cool stuff. As you can see, these are pretty bold dart frogs. A lot of dart frogs are very shy and don't like to be anywhere near you. And I don't touch them or hold them, just to be clear, but you can see that these animals don't seem to mind me being up in their face, filming them, you name it. Whereas you're going to see soon that some of my other species are very shy and won't let you come this close to them and film them so easily. All right, now that was really just a snack for them. 
they get a bigger feeding in most cases. But now we're going to go ahead and feed my other Dendrobates tinctorius, which is a cobalt tinctorius. So if you guys remember me doing the rehousing, and we need to do that, we need to redo this whole tank. Uh, we redid this tank, and as you can see, holy moly, it is looking good. Uh, this is a little throwback from what it used to look like to now. Good things take time, friends, but holy, this tank looks great. Unfortunately, though, the, well, there he is, the female passed away. And I mentioned this in that same video where I talk about the Neozorius. But he, this guy's doing really well, so let's go ahead and feed him now. He's going to notice all these flies very soon and come running over. Oh, here he comes. He's looking. There he is. Come on over, champ. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, these are the cobalt. So they're technically the same species as the Azorius, but they're a different locality of that species that exhibits a different color. Pretty cool, right? They're absolutely beautiful. And this again is the male. Unfortunately, it's the female that passed. But as you can see, this guy is doing super well. So I truly have no idea what on earth happened to that female. But thankfully, this guy is maintaining a very healthy weight. He's active, vibrant. Couldn't ask for anything more. He's he's doing fantastic. But check out how this tank has just grown in so nice. We have the Margravia climbing up here. There's an Umbelada Margravia on that wall. The bromeliads are pupping. I put a pup here from one of the glass frog tanks just recently. That's doing so nice. Uh, we have a uh, what is this? Some believe it or not, this is actually a species of ficus. Can't remember the name of it now the top of my mind but all in all this tank has just grown in so beautifully and i couldn't be more pleased with it just yeah a true tragedy about that female frog in any case we'll let this guy continue running around and eating in his jungle and move on to the next frogs so uh this is this is lunchbox and lunchbox sort of has a eater of worlds type personality um we're gonna go ahead and feed her now before she before she gets a little too crazy, uh, you may be asking, why don't you just feed her in her enclosure? Well, we're saving that for the how to keep adult Pac-Man frogs video. Again, if you haven't seen the one on how to raise froglets and juveniles, check it out up here. You guys asked for an adult care video, it's coming. All right, let's feed her now. She's hungry and I mean, she always is, oh boy. It's scary, if it's not the food, it's my hands. She's always trying to eat me. Okay, everybody, so here is Lunchbox. She is a very big girl, and I don't mean that in an offensive way. She just is. I mean, look at her. This is a beefy frog. I think you underestimate how big she is. A lot of people tell me, wow, I don't think I've ever seen a Pac-Man frog this big. Yeah, they get big, guys. They get big. And she is, yeah, she's already getting a little curious. In any case, Today on the menu, we have some button quail chicks. I've thawed them out. No, she's not eating all those. Don't worry, I have to feed some of my snakes and they're getting some. But yeah, Lunchbox is getting quail today. She usually eats vertebrate prey as well as earthworms and crickets sometimes and discoid roaches. But yeah, she, she was very fond of fish very fond of frogs and very fond of mice and birds so i'm gonna use some bamboo tongs because she goes nuts and i just don't want her to hurt herself on the metal ones let's go ahead i'm just gonna try and clean that off a little here we go everybody you've been warned she doesn't give you any warning oh my <laughs> and just like that a whole bird is gone everybody Oh, that's kind of scary. All that's left is a few feathers. Lunch box. People, the lunch is in the box. Oh yeah, she's just like uh, swallowing it in. Happy frog. This frog is epic, I gotta say. All right, we're gonna give her one more. She's already turned and facing the other way, ready for action. Oh. <laughs> you gotta be with me here, that is scary. This frog, I tell you, holy camoly, lunchbox, what a beast. I love you. You're a wonderful frog. I, I do love you, I promise. Yeah, you just got to get that foot out of your mouth there. 
and see what you're watching out for is that ridge in their mouth. See how it comes to a point? You do not want to get bit by that. It's like a bone and they use it to pop frogs and prey that would puff up. Matches with the top and let me tell you, they'll make you bleed. She hasn't got me good yet. She's lunged at me and, and caught my finger and let go or I pulled away fast enough, but one of these days she's probably gonna get me. Anyways, hope you enjoyed seeing my favorite fat frog. Let's move on. All right guys, these are my Phyllobates terribilis, which in the wild are the most poisonous land vertebrate on our planet. But in captivity, thankfully, they are quite harmless. Uh, so I don't have to worry about them killing me. <laughs> but they are so fun. These frogs, guys, are incredibly bold. Not at all like some of the other dart frogs we've seen so far in the video today. Um, yeah, they're, they're something else and they know when they're gonna be fed. So they're starting to get kind of excited here. Now, what's interesting about these dart frogs is they don't have to just feed on microphagous prey. They can consume larger prey. You may recall that in our last silkworm feeding video, we actually tried giving these guys some silkworms and they had no issues taking down small silkworms. So it's kind of a testament to just how crazy they are. Uh, but today we have some um, one fourth inch crickets and we also have some Drosophila hydei dusted in the calcium plus. So we're gonna take some here, drop those in like this, just a few to get everybody excited. Coming over here, and then I'm gonna start dropping some crickets in so you can see. I don't wanna throw the crickets in. If they're not around, they just run away and nobody's gonna eat them. Um, but let's see what happens here with the flies. <laughs> So it begins. And once they start hearing that their uh, tank mates are also eating, they hear that and they just get all excited and want to run over and start eating too. One of the frogs is hiding down here in a little under a piece of wood. It's a cool little hideout they have. All right, I think we can try some crickets. See what they make of those. I assume that they'll be more interested in them than the flies. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now they're like, oh boy. See the cricket? Goodbye, Jiminy. What the heck? <laughs> what happened to you there? <laughs> what changed your mind? <laughs> what changed your mind, buddy? Oh, the fruit fly. Huh? Okay, fair enough. Wow, that cricket is playing with fire. It better not move over there or it's in trouble. Going with a few more crickets. See what the response is. Oh, not one. I missed it. Another cricket down here. Sorry, Jiminy. Wrong way. Oh, this one's gonna get it. Nice. Oh, see, they like the big prey. They like the larger prey for sure. Not sure what happened here. Seems like they lost sight of the cricket. Truly, it just looked like little aliens. Also, what is with that leg spread? <laughs> it looks hilarious. Is that comfortable, buddy? You can see that toe tapping going on again. Trying to draw them out. All right, I'm just gonna finish off with a bunch of fruit flies everywhere for everyone to eat. Put some over here since there's a frog hiding down there. Perfecto, a meal for the Terribilis. Hey everybody, so these are my Guyanese banded Leucamelis. Bumblebee dart frogs. Let's see if they come out. They're kind of hit and miss. They're very shy frogs. They don't always like to make a presence. I've had these for a while. It's a it's a 2.1, so two males and one female. But I haven't really decided if I wanna if I want to keep them. They're just so shy. Things might change if they were in an actual terrarium, but we will see. Um, but hopefully we get a little look. I can hear some tongue flicking going on down there. So somebody's eating, but. Not sure if we're gonna get a glimpse of the frogs or not. I actually see that there's one down there eating. But again, they're just <laughs> very shy. Oh yeah, there's another one. <laughs> kind of see them there. Yeah, they're they're cool animals, but <laughs> again, not a whole lot to see. Again, I to be fair, it's it's a pretty uh, grown-in tank or bin, but 
I don't know. We'll see. What do you think? Do you like Leucomelis? Should I set them up? One of the frogs and co's that I haven't finished and, and uh, keep them there? I'd like to know your thoughts. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, which of my pet frogs is your favorite and why? I can't for the life of me decide. I think it's a little bit of a hard question. They all have such unique quirks and perks, but that's your job. You're my viewers, you're my audience. I get to be cheeky and ask you the hard questions. So as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in the conversation below. I look forward to seeing your responses. Awesome. Now, these frogs were given to me by someone who did not want them anymore. Uh, we gotta be really careful because they try to escape a lot and that's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> these are my Santa Isabella's and Dendrobates truncata dart frogs. There's a group of them. There's one of the males. There's, I believe, 2.1, so two males and one female these. And the truncata are supposedly a pair. But in any case, I have them set up in this bin right now. I really just don't know. I'm going to maybe throw them into a communal sort of setup. They were all in a group. I don't normally keep multiple species of dart frog together. Uh, but this is how they, they came. So they're staying that way. But yeah, they're very bold, unfortunately. So there's one of the truncatas hiding down there. And it's kind of scary because you don't want them to escape, as you can see. So you gotta be very careful. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead now and drop some flies in here so you guys have a chance to see them eat. There's one of the truncatas. Santa Isabella. You can hear all their little tick tick ticks as they're catching the flies. Pretty cute. Yeah, they do have a lovely song, so I'll give them that. Sometimes it's a little disruptive when I'm trying to film, but the Ufagas aren't much better. <laughs> Sing your heart out, little buddy. Sing your heart out, wherever you are. All right, you get the idea. I'm getting a little nervous here about keeping that lid open so long. <laughs> but yeah, they're pretty interesting, and I do have plans to keep them and set them up in something pretty cool. Okay, so for the next few frogs, we're gonna use some smaller fruit flies. These are the Drosophila melanogasters, so they're tinier than the Hydeis. And these are gonna be used to feed the species that are tiny. We'll add our calcium. Perfect. Okay guys, so these, are my Ufaga pumilios, the blue jean poison dart frogs. You may have seen them in the video I did as a tutorial on how I set this up. Oh my goodness, this terrarium has just grown in like crazy. Unfortunately, I have not gotten any babies or froglets from these guys yet. Oh, one of them is actually somewhere back there. I just saw them. Hopefully they'll come to the front now if we offer them some flies. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some fruit flies in here. See what they make of the food. Looks like the female is getting ready to come out and eat in that corner there. There she is. The male is somewhere in the back of the tank. So this would be a good example of some of my dart frogs that are a lot shyer, uh, as you can see. Oh, there she is. They are very, very cute little frogs. Super fun. see the mail that much but you kind of get an idea of how those guys are friends as always i'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank my patrons over on the patreon platform and i think my ofaga wants to thank you as well my little chirping pumilio he's saying thank you for supporting us on the channel that's enough singing diane because you're not really good at it okay 
that you can steal the stage. In any case, I want to thank you all so much for your additional support. As you all know, watching the videos, commenting, giving them a thumbs up if you like them, of course, are the easiest and best ways you can support. But for those of you looking to take it a little step further and unlock a whole skew of perks, there's Patreon. From discounts on merch, sneak peeks and more, a direct line of communication with me, you can become a patron for as little as $2 a month by checking out the link down below in the video description. And as always, when you become a new channel patron, you get an in-video shout out. How cool is that? Wouldn't you want to hear me say your name in a video? So today we're thanking our four, almost did three there, four newest channel patrons uh, since the last time we did shout outs. We're thanking Nancy, Keaton, Marie, or Mary, I always want to default to the French pronunciation, and Jen. Thank you so much to all four of you for becoming my newest channel patron. I look forward to communicating with you more there and getting to know you all on the platform and thank you all for your consideration in Reptiliatus patronage. Let's get back to the video. Okay everybody, these are my H. Fleshmani, Fleshmani northern glass frogs. So you can see here we have one female and she's actually ovulating. Those are eggs there. I have not gotten any tadpoles or eggs from my frogs yet. I'm not really trying to breed them. Like I haven't been doing a rain chamber or anything like that. Oh, hey, there's a few more up here. That's a little male, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. And then we have another female here. As you can see, she also has some eggs there on the side of her organs, on both sides. So usually I feed these animals one fourth inch crickets and sometimes they also eat fruit flies just because I love how the fruit flies will climb up every surface and be more visible and accessible to the frogs. Uh, they just don't fill them up as much. So we mostly do the one eighth to one fourth inch crickets here. Now there are 12 glass frogs in that enclosure. So we put a good amount of crickets in there for them every two to three days or so. Oh, this girl looks like she might want to jump away. Probably best, I don't want her jumping. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> she leapt onto this Rapidophora leaf. I get kind of nervous about them being too close to the edge, so sometimes I just do this. Excuse me, usually jump away. Hello. Boop, boop, there we go. That one's on the wire over there. Yeah, so basically we're just gonna take our crickets Pop them in like so. Hope to document some feeding here. Nice. Nice. Love it. In any case, I can say that this gave you all a chance to see uh, quite a few of these guys. And now we're gonna move on to my granulated or granular glass frogs, the Cochranella granulosa. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so this enclosure is quite grown in. <laughs> there are plants like this Monstera Peru or the uh, Philodendron uh, Silver Sword there are just taking over, but the frogs, as you can see, are doing wonderfully. Generally speaking, they're pretty easy to feed too. Like you can just go like that and oftentimes they'll eat right away. Huh. I mean, if you don't want to eat, you don't have to. In any case, the rest of the group is all over the place. There's two of them down there. So we're gonna go ahead and drop some crickets in. Oh, three of them down there, actually. Drop some crickets. And uh, give them all the opportunity to have a good meal. I don't know if anyone's going to eat there for you to see. In that back corner, maybe. We got to watch out for this cheeky frog because they're going to try and make a run for it. Hey, well, sorry, guys. I mean, I can't control the frogs if they don't want to eat on camera. They're not going to eat on camera. This one is being so adventurous, though. It's kind of funny. Hello there. I don't know. I did just clean their bin the other day, so maybe it feels kind of new still. I don't know. In any case, we'll move on now to some Pac-Man frogs. These are the Ceratophrys cornuta. All right, everybody. Here is Avocado, one of my Ceratophrys cornutas. And today, Nightcrawler worms are on the menu. Let's see what Avocado makes of this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can do it. Up here. Come on. Da, 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 da. 
This frog is hilarious. Uh oh. Oi! Holy moly. That was epic. That is crazy. All right, nice job, avocado. Almost all the way gone. Oh, it looks like she's sticking her tongue out. Wait for that last little chomp. Nice. All right, so this next one's a bit small for those worms, so we're gonna do a cricket. Eh. Oh, just trying to give him a hand here. Oh, you got it, buddy. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, quick before it traumatizes that back leg. Grab it. Oh, there's a mite on them. Oh, that's okay. It's just a soil mite. Here, there you go. We'll put few more in for good measure. Oh, went really far back there. There we go. That should be good. All right, so here's another smaller frog. So for this one, we're gonna do crickets again. Boom. Nice catch, buddy. Yeah, these are just really pretty frogs. You gotta love them. Okay, the last Ceratophrys, Ceratophrys cornuda is my other big one that I got at the same time as avocado this is a pretty good sized frog these guys are getting bigger now i tell you here we go oh yeah get it get it get it it's gonna get away there we go that is awesome oh wow you can actually see the worm moving inside the frog oh, i don't know how i feel about that nasty look at that you see it look Ah, uh, yikes. Well, hope you had a good meal. I would go nuts if my food was moving around inside my stomach. Okay. Well, everybody, there is one more frog left for us to feed this evening, and that is my fringe leaf frog, the Cruziohyla craspidopus, who's back there being a dork and lunging at leaves since I opened the door. Kind of hilarious. Now I'm kind of hoping that we can get this beautiful frog to make an appearance if I offer it some... Crickets, some Jiminy's. <laughs> you missed! That's a leaf! That's a leaf! Yeah, you don't want to eat that. Bleh, get it out of your mouth. Here, this is what you meant to have. <laughs> I love this frog. And the way they use their hands, too, is just hilarious. Oh, yeah, don't, don't look like that. You look so upset about it. Don't get mad at me, everybody. This frog is happy it just ate. So I know I say this just about every time I feed this animal, but usually what I do is I tongue feed a few crickets, and then the rest I just drop in for them to hunt. Because, you know, it sure looks like they know what they're doing. Oh yeah, the throat starts doing that. He's getting ready to jump again. <laughs> Amazing. At least you look a little bit less grumpy about that one. Never mind, I spoke too soon. Yeah, yeah, it's like a beautiful Kermit or something. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead now and drop the rest of the crickets in here and chat a little bit. Usually feed about six, two to three times a week. Okie doke. Now this is a very special project and I'm going to do an elaborate video on them soon, but you're gonna get one tiny little glimpse with not many details because I love you guys. These frogs are a dream project. I've dreamt of owning this species for a very long time and I can't honestly believe I have them. I didn't realize this. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm the only person in Canada that owns these frogs or this species specifically. Um, these are the Ophaga histrionica small form redheads or the Ufaga histrionica redhead small form. And my male is somewhere in here, kind of hopped away and hid. He's pretty shy, he's absolutely stunning. I'll insert some footage of him in a sec. Might come out and eat, I'm not really sure, but we'll try and see if we can get some footage of him. I think he's in his cocoa hut. My female on the other hand, who we're about to feed shortly, is not shy at all. She comes right out and loves to eat in the open, mostly. I've had these frogs for a few weeks now in quarantine. Um, they both have their own enclosure, as you saw, and they're going to be going into a very large enclosure. So as soon as Sabzi and Basil move into their future home, those frogs are going into one of these, the 36 by 18 deep by 36 high exoterra in my living room. It's gonna be so epic. Guys, there he is. 
see he's pretty shy. He might come out a bit more, but come on, buddy. There you go. He's an absolutely beautiful frog. That fly does not know where it's headed. There we go. We got a few good looks at him. So beautiful. I think that's enough. I'll save some for the actual reveal video. Let's look at the female. All right, so here's the female's terrarium. Uh, okay, let's drop some fruit flies in for her. Should come out. She's just over here. You can kind of see her under the bromeliad leaf. So there is the female. Both of them are just absolutely gorgeous. Can't believe I have a pair of these animals. Where are you going? Anyway. We'll let her eat in peace again. This is just supposed to be a quick little sneak peek for you guys to have a look. Stay tuned for an upcoming video. There you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video, getting to see some of the frogs that I haven't shown you before, while also giving lots of love to the ones that you see regularly and enjoy seeing. If you guys would like to see more content pertaining to keeping frogs or amphibians at large, you can check out the playlist up above. And let me know what you think. Do you wanna see more feeding videos specific to types of animals? I know, for example, I used to do a feeding on my geckos video. That's gonna be coming soon, I think. But did you enjoy the feeding all my frogs video? Should we do a feeding all my snakes video? Let me know in the comment section down below. Can't wait to see you all again next week. Take care, have a wonderful weekend. Bye everybody.